Okay, it looks like we are now streaming on Facebook and we want to say Shabbat Shalom uh, to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We are looking forward to uh, continuing the message that um, Pastor Mike started uh, last week on flourishing and uh, I am going to be following up with um, part two, doing the work. And so let's uh, go ahead and open up in prayer and we are going to, um, uh, and then we'll get and pick up from, from where Pastor Mike left off uh, last week, according to um, my interpretation <laughs> of where he, where, he, where he left off. And for those of you who don't know me, I am um, Karen Davis, Mike Davis' wife, and um, as co-pastor with him, and also I am the chief learning officer for uh, our organization, CCTD, the Center for Christian Training and Development, and um, where we are focused on developing God's people and providing them the tools uh, that they need for core transformation. So um, that is, and part of my role is in where we're going in the new year is designing um, learning experiences that allows God's people to make the changes that they need to make um, using tools and strategies. So we're kicking off 2022 uh, with that in mind. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your steadfast love. Uh, again, on this Shabbat, we pray, Father, for families all over um, this world and our nation who are struggling with uh, the COVID virus. We pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you will strengthen their bodies, that you will heal them, that you will protect their families. We stand in agreement, Father, with those who are right now um, who are right in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death. And we're asking, Lord, for mercy. As you heard the voice of Hezekiah, we ask, Lord, that you would answer the prayers of these families that are, are struggling. And for any health situations, Father, we just pray. We also, Lord, ask for just a, a super dose of hope, that you would fill your people with hope. And there's a lot of fatigue and and when prayers are not answered the way that we thought we um, they should go, it it can create a, a sense of distrust even in praying again. And so, Father, we're asking that you would rejuvenate and reset us and and cause us to see uh, even afresh and anew uh, with all the struggles that each family, each um people, all the people that, that is struggling, we ask, Lord, that you would renew their fire and and just just saturate them and flood them with your love, your your compassion for them. It's not an easy time and and we lean in with them and stand with them. And Father, we thank you for you, you making yourself real to each and every one of us where we're at in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So we have an opportunity. Uh, last week, Mike, uh, Pastor Mike shared uh, some seven steps on, on flourishing. And so let me go ahead and share with you, um, uh, just remind you of what it is that, uh, that we had covered. And those seven steps for flourishing, um, making change easier is um, decide what you want to change and then decide you will change it. Nurture your desire and passion for the change. Create a plan. Find mentors and coaches in a um, support group. Use your imagination to be and do use emotions on purpose and intentionally and as always acknowledge God in all your ways and so my uh, pastor Mike went through um, these in great detail uh, last week and what I am going to do and my role here is to take it uh, at another level and bringing us uh, to this place of 
being able to break this down and and applying it um, even more uh, to uh, what we are going to be doing. So the first place I want to start and I'm going to go ahead and leave this over on the side here and the place I, I want to start is in Jeremiah chapter 29. So for those of you who are pulling out your Bibles, I actually, I also have, this is a Bible gateway set up and I'm going to um, go through a couple passages. And most of us are familiar with Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope and most of us are hang on to that particular scripture <laughs> we have mugs we have t-shirts we have journals there is I mean we hang on to for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. And if this is one of your, your favorite scriptures, you know, go ahead and uh, just post in, uh, in chat if you're in the Zoom room or even in on Facebook Live, like if this is one of those scriptures that you hang on to. Um, and it's fine, I mean, it, it is a beautiful scripture, you know, because God is saying, I, I you know, I, I, know what, I know what I have in mind for you. So, and you know, that verse, or I should say that principle that Mike has right there on number three, create a plan um, or decide what you want, one, two, and three. God knows what he wants for us. He, he, has, an, I, he has a vision for our welfare and, and he has a vision for um, our future and a hope. What happens many times though in this scripture is that we don't read verses one through 10. And verses 1 through 10 is a precursor to verse 11. So I'm going to zoom into, this is Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is, these are the words of a letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. I'm going to go to verse 4. It said, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters multiply there and do not decrease but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare for thus says the Lord of, of hosts the God of Israel do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name I did not send them declares the Lord for thus says the Lord verse 10 for thus says the Lord when 70 years are completed for Babylon I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place so set with that for, for a minute, set with that for just a minute. <laughs> God says that he sent them into Babylon. He said, I sent you into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Don't listen to those prophesying in my name who are saying that this is, you know, peace, peace, because 
I sent you into Babylon and you are going to be there for 70 years. So build your houses, live in them, plant gardens and eat your produce because this is the consequence of not heeding my instructions. Now this is kind of tough, right? This is this is a a tough message. We 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 want to lean in on Jeremiah 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. But many of us don't want to do a major reality check on what it takes to get to this point. And it is, I'm not going to say it's easy. When we look at maybe things that we've done, seeds that we have sown that has now corrupted our relationships with family members in our marriages with our children or how we have handled our finances or how we have um, planned out our life and we, we didn't use the best years, quote unquote, of our life to, to build a, a sturdy foundation that our our children and children's children could flourish from. So now we're having to deal with the consequences of violating core principles. What I want you to, to, to gather from this, that when we're talking about flourishing and making change easier, the first place we want to start is having a major reality check with ourselves, doing an assessment and not lying to ourselves. God does have great plans for us, plans for our welfare, not for evil, to give us a future and a hope. When you go into verse 12, he says, then you will call upon me. So. After that 70 years, you're going to call upon me. Then will you call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. How many of you know that this is this is a challenging message? How many of you know that it, it's it's uh, you know like I, I really don't want to have to deal with verses one through ten or even twelve through fourteen because I I just I want the your plan for me right now to be fully developed and fully evolved and, and, and that you have a right now plan for me and I don't really want your future plans for me to be out 70 years. What I, what I am endeavoring to help us grapple with is that there is a timing in regards to the plans that God has for us. There is a timing. And one of the challenges that I have found even in my own personal walk is that when we are, especially when we receive prophetic words and God is, you know, and, and there are things that he has spoken. I have things that have spoken to me, you know, as far back as, you know, when I was 12 years old and, and you see little glimpses of it. And there is a, and, and of course, all along the way, my, myself and, and, and Mike and I individually, we had prophetic words that we received, believe God in, in different areas. And, and also we realized that some of those words were, and especially when we received them when we were younger and, you know, just being enthusiastic, being full of zeal and being full of passion for the things that God was um, doing, we were hungry for God and we were uh, passionate for the word of God. But what we did not realize is that um, the word that was spoken to us was a, a planted seed that was going, that needed to mature and that um, it, the season for it flourishing was not necessarily in the moment that we received the word. And this is endeavoring, I mean, you know, 
to be a, a word of encouragement because sometimes we we can get dismayed and we can feel um, uh, uh, discouraged, you know, at times Well, I thought God said, you know, I thought that God was, you know, going to do that and, or we are hanging on to what we believe God has said and we're not doing the work that is necessary to bring us and put us into position for that flourishing. And so this is a, we're going into 2022. This is the, this is, we're going into the third year of this um, COVID pandemic. We're going into this, um, uh, another season. And, uh, and there's some things that we have to like, you know, it's like, okay, year one, that was new. That was like, wow, that hit everyone by surprise. You know, the majority of the world. 2020. 2021 wraps around and people are thinking, okay, we're coming out of it. And, and many people were dismayed, you know, because I thought we were coming out of this. And we had, you know, other variants that began to, to form. And we're heading into 2022 with another variant. And, and the fatigue, there is hope fatigue. There is a lot of emotional fatigue. And so how do you move yourself into a place of, of dealing with this dichotomy or this paradox that there is a time we are in a time of flourishing. We are in a season of flourishing, but there are some, some, some very real realities, some things that we're having to, um, to grapple with, some things that we're having to, uh, to deal with. And so I, I want to read a, a, um, a story to you. It's very short. It's, it's um, called Autobiography in Five Short Chapters by Portia Nelson. And this is um, a, it's been around since 1977. It's out of the book called There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. So I'm going to just take a moment and and read this very short um, autobiography. Prologue. My life has been a series of wonderful experiences. It's a pity I wasn't there for most of them. Autobiography and five short chapters. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I am in this same place, but it isn't my fault. I still, it still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there. I still fall in it. It's a habit, but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter four, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five, I walk down a different street. Now tell me, how many of you see yourselves in these chapters? How many of you have experienced walking down the street, you've walked down and you fell in it, it wasn't your fault, you didn't know it was there, and you got, and, you, <laughs> and, and it takes a long time to get out. The second time you go down, you walk down the street, you pretend that you don't see it, you fall, you fall in, and it takes a, a little bit longer to get out. The third time, you fall in it, it's now a, a habit. The fourth time you get out, you know, the fourth time you walk down and you are, you realize, okay, I, I need to avoid this hole. And the fifth time you're like, I need to go down a different street. How many of you have decided for 2022 that you're going down a different street? And it is a, um, and I'm just, you know, looking at, 
<laughs> so I'm looking at responses. You know, folks are saying, yes, I'm walking down uh, a different street. And, and there is a, I believe, a call for us to walk down the different street. And this is some of the guidelines that Mike was sharing. You know, it's like, okay, so you decide what you want to change. You're going to go down a different street. And then you have to decide that you are going to change it. And you have to nurture that desire and passion for the change. Like, I am not going down that street anymore. Even though it's a habit, it's been a pattern, and maybe it was a one-year pattern, or maybe it's been a lifetime pattern, I get to choose that I am not going down that same street. And so when, we, when we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, I know God has great plans for me, but if I continue going down that old street, I am not going to experience the plans that he has for me. I'm going down a different street, which means I need to get a plan. I need to get a plan in place that will support me, that will support me in going in a different direction. So let's take a look at, at how one of our, um, one of the, uh, um, Nehemiah is not a prophet, but Nehemiah actually experienced going down a, if you will, a different street. So let me go ahead and pull that passage up for you and we're just going to we're going to take a look at what did Nehemiah do uh, differently um, or I shouldn't say differently uh, he had Nehemiah is a fulfillment of what Jeremiah was praying about uh, in verses 12 when when he spoke and said that when you come back when you all return um, you will have an opportunity to you know at the at the fulfillment of of those 70 years you're going to have an opportunity to um begin um uh and experiencing what god has 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 for you at that time and i you know i'm i i am mike i don't know how you do it and keeping up with you know the chat here and the chat on facebook but i apologize folks because it's just like you know, this, this does take coordination of <laughs> trying to stay connected and watching what uh, everyone is, uh, all the feedback that's coming in. So I'm endeavoring to get that set up for myself. So let's, so let's uh, pull back. So we all have decided we're going to go down a different street. Let's check in with Nehemiah and take a look at, at what he experienced. So Nehemiah uh, in uh, chapter one, Nehemiah was informed by one of his brothers that there were there were Jews who had escaped who had survived the exile um, and concerning Jerusalem and they said to me the remnant here in the province who has survived the exile is in great trouble and shame the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire so Nehemiah has actually been in um, he's actually been uh, in Babylon that's where Nehemiah is coming from so there is a remnant that was left in Jerusalem and they have not had they it's been 70 years and Jerusalem is still the wall is still broken um, they did get the temple rebuilt but the walls had not been re, been rebuilt so there's the temple that was rebuilt and by Ezra and team and now um, when he goes back, it's like, you know, there, there's still ruins around us. There's still, you know, you're, there's still stone. There's, we have not returned to the fullness of glory that we had um, before we went into exile. So Nehemiah's prayer. So when we look at, when we look at the flourishing, this plan for flourishing using Nehemiah's model, Nehemiah saw what was going on um, and he, his heart was I mean he was grieved so verse 4 he says as soon as I heard these words I sat down and and wept and mourned for days and can and I continue fasting and praying before the God of heaven so this is like in the winter months like in this current and and on the Hebrew calendar it was like around November December when he um went and um when he was told about this situation and um, and, and this burden, you know, that just hit him. So he said, I, he said, I wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And he said, 
O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house has, has sinned. So that verse is from verse 5 through 6. He is applying and fulfilling what God told them to do. That at the end, when 70 years has come to pass, that you are going to, uh, you are you are going to petition to me. He said, "You will call upon my name, and I will hear you." So you, you, we see Nehemiah doing exactly what Jeremiah was instructed to tell them to do. That at the end of that time, you come and you pray and you and you petition God. And so he does, he's in this, he is living out the prophetic word of Jeremiah 70 years before. And he says, we have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. So we see Nehemiah is in this and it's it is really critical to understand this that in at the 70 year mark he said in I'm in and we are we are in a place where it says and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and we are in a season I really do believe we're in a season of and it came to pass and it came to pass when I heard these words that so when when we're looking at these things that we're looking at and it came to pass it came to pass we're in a time of the fullness we're in a a season of the fullness of time and and it is important to understand what do you need to do in the fullness of time? When you think about the children of Israel, when they were when when God was um, sent the plagues and was bringing them out of Egypt, that when he when he came when Moses came and was saying, "God, it's time to go," and it's been you know hundreds of years that they've been in this place, mentally, emotionally, they they, they were tired you know, of being slaves in Egypt. But when we, of course, as we know the story of what they experienced in the wilderness and and all of their journeys, you know, um, over the 40 years, we realized that they weren't quite ready. So they they were ready to get out of this this narrow place within Egypt, but mentally and emotionally, they were not quite ready to step into who they were. And so it took, in the fullness of time, after 40 years, they were able to go into the promised land. There is a, a timing that's associated um, with our emancipation. There is a timing associated with the fulfillment of promises. There is a timing. And what is critical is what are we doing in that waiting period? What are we doing with our time? What are we doing? with the thus says the Lord what are we doing when we're walking down the same street and you know are we doing an assessment like hey you know what that was an accident the first time the second time okay um okay shame on me that I fell into that the third time okay now this has become a habit what are we doing in that season between it's now time to take a, we're going on a, on a new street, we're going in a, another direction, but we're still struggling with being in that old mindset. So we're, we're being challenged right now. We're being challenged right now 
like one of my favorite characters that is not necessarily so favorite in um, the Gospels, but the, by the, the man at the pool of Bethesda who was there for 38 years. And we, Mike and I, we have a lot of conversations about this because and I've heard pastors and ministers say, you know, I, you know, if that had been me, I know I could have found somebody to put me in the water when, when the angel came and troubled that water. I'm sure I could have found somebody to put me in. And, and, and so there, there is this thing like, well, you know, why did it take the man 38 years? He's still there. What I love about this man is imunah, you know, it's Hebrew for faithfulness. He kept showing up. He kept showing up with the hope that one day he might make it into, uh, into that there would be someone, somehow, some way that he was going to get a healing. And when Jesus came upon him on that day, he said, what he asked them, ask him, was not how long have you, you know, uh, you know, his, his backstory. It's more like, will you be made whole? In the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. And when the fullness of time comes, it doesn't take a long time. It is like miraculous instant. And for some of us, and, and it's, there's like, I really want to share that there's no shame. There's, there, God, Jesus did not shame the man for being there for 38 years. He was very in tune with, will you be made whole? Do you want to do this now? Do you want to experience wholeness right now? Do you want to go down a different street? Then pick up your bed and walk. And he picked up his bed and walked. We are in this season of picking up our bed and walking. We're in this season of going down a totally different street. And it is going to take a decision. It is going to take a decision. Decide what you want to change. And then decide you will change it. It is not enough for God to have plans for you. You must also be a co-creator, a co-partner in that. If Nehemiah had not spent time in prayer, intercession, seeking God, acknowledging, hey, we went off, not only did we as a people go off, but my father sinned against you. I have sinned against you. So we start off with acknowledging that, you know what, I strayed away. Some type of way, I've got off your plan. And then he comes back to God's character. But I remember, I remember you, God. I remember that you, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, that I can, I, can, I know that you are attentive to my prayer, that your, your eyes are open and you are hearing the prayer of your servant. So we are, we are in this season, we're in this time that we can come and we're saying, we're deciding, Lord, you know what, I, I, I want to do and I want to align with you. I want to align with your purpose. I want to align with your plan. We are in this season of verse 11 that as we sit with God and as we attend to his purpose, as we attend to his plan, as we listen to him and we make those course corrections and we realize that, you know what, this, this street, you know what, that I've got to let go of that street. Maybe I was trying to build something on that previous street and now it's time for me to go and, and, and go a different direction. We're, we're in this season where God is flooding us with his compassion, with his love. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. There's no condemnation. There is nothing but love. There's nothing but compassion and that we're being driven not by, from, a, uh, from a place of fear, but we are being compelled from a place of love 
that we can fully live and engage and be um, fully alive and, and flourishing in the things that God has for us. And that's why Mike says flourishing, making change easier. That there is not this grappling for God's love. There's not this petitioning for him to hear us. He's saying, I, there, in the fullness of time, there's some things that we may need to um, align ourselves and get ourselves in place. And as we get things in place, and you, as you consider this, as when Nehemiah spent that winter months getting a plan, getting a strategy, assessing the needs, that when he went in to speak to King Artaxerxes, and King Artaxerxes asked him, let me just um, go to that verse, chapter 2. In the month of Nisan, you know, which is coming up, it's usually like the, the month of, of March and, and April. Uh, the month of Nisan is the month of redemption. It is the month where the children of Israel um, were freed from, uh, from Egypt. Uh, it is the month of Passover. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when, when wine was before him, he said, I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of heart. Then I was very much afraid. And I said to the king, Let the king live forever. And then he says, Why should, I not, why should not my face be sad when the city, the places of my father's graves, lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire? And then the king said to me, What are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, if your servant has found favor in your sight, and then he begins to list out everything that he needed. He didn't just say, and of course we don't know all the details here of, of how all of that came to pass. What the, the teaching point here is that Nehemiah was ready to give an answer to the king when he asked, what are you requesting? And you know where that came from? Him spending time over here. And so verse 11, he says, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. On Mike's flourishing making change easier easier number three create a plan nehemiah came in with a plan but it took some time it took you know stepping away being quiet looking at you know what we need to go down a different street we down we went down a street that caused us to go into exile for 70 years it's time to go down a different street and and going back to the instructions, when he says, when, when I heard these words, he says, I, then I sat down and wept and mourned. And I'm not sure if you're hearing our, my blower um, outside. But this is, this is very critical for us to understand. That we have in our hands the opportunity to get that plan sit down with God spend the time before we actually enter into that opportunity when that opportunity comes that we are now ready it's like when what are you requesting what do you need what do you need and being very clear on what it is that you need for 2022 do you are you clear about what it is that you need for 2022 and going what do you need for flourishing and someone say oh i need money um i need this I need, but but getting very clear there it, the money the all these other things are are there to support but what is it that you need what is the plan that you need to act on and to work out going forward so let me let me share with you a couple things that I have done over the past couple years and I think you know as a point of illustration so a lot of you know you know if you've been following and let me see if I can do that um, I have 
journals. You know, I have um, a ton of journals, and these are what I call my work down um, journals. Um, they are a way of me processing getting out of that, you know, rec recognizing that I'm going down the same street and I am having conversations with myself. I'm repeating the same thing over and over. And if you look at, for me, I was looking at my journal and said, man, I've been crying about, this was like several years ago. I've been crying about the same thing and I have it put into place the things that I need to do in order to make change. And so we're, when we look at it, you know, and, and I had, I was doing some work with myself um, over the, the past couple of weeks and just getting myself in tune and, and ready. And, and I wrote down and said, okay, it's time to go down a different street. So I'm going down a different street. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to, uh, just so you can see, I'm going to uh, take my my background off and show you these are my journals and actually including this one they're heavy about they average about 300 pages um, each and this is from 2017 no, no 2019 to current and all of them are filled except for the one that I have for 2022 uh, these are um, my my process for for working through and working down uh, what is God saying to me and how am I how am I walking through this and am I following through with what um, God has said and let me just show you one example of one that and Mike and I are currently living this um, let me just pull up the date on it back in Back in August 31st, uh, 2021, we were, we had hit some serious, serious um, all-time lows. And I wrote in there, I don't know, you know, let me pull it this one. It said, I don't know how yet. I don't know how yet, how we get out of this. I do know we win. This is my story. This is our story. This is the story of us. And we were at an all-time low um, business-wise, financially. Um, 2019 was one of the worst uh, financial years um, in our business. And we had um, had some health crisis. We almost lost um, two of our daughters, our oldest daughter and our youngest daughter. Uh, in 2019. 2019 was a tough year. And uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to, any other way to say it. It was it was a, a unbelievable, tough, tough year. But it was also one of the greatest, you know, as I ended that journal, it was one of the greatest years of my personal life my 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 walk as god was helping me to understand what it meant to be a cold breaker a repair of the breach that i was a wild card that i i, I needed there were things that he was doing in me as his daughter as his daughter as his ambassador as his peacemaker and so the work when we completed this work right we were doing this work no evidence of anything coming um hit january 2020 and um had no no um options at all about what we were doing financially things were getting worse and i made some moves and some changes we made some different things some some changes and our life literally changed like that 
I mean, like that. I went from not being able to get any um, um, people to even respond to my, my resume back in 2019 to having, being chased, like literally being chased in February of 2020. It was, I mean, I mean, it was like night and day. I, and I mean, having, I mean, it was, it, it was unbelievable, truly. And being able, and not only that, not only did I get a new position, our business busted out. And we were able to pay off all of our debt. Debt that went way back, we were able to pay off all of our debt in the fullness of time. I hope you understand what I mean. But like, what are you doing in the waiting period? What are you doing when you are, are in that valley of the shadow of death? What are you doing when you have made up your mind to make a change and you are, you are nurturing that desire and you are working, working it? And these are, these are my testimonies. Like, you know, it's like you want something, prove it. Where in your life does it show that you that you really want it, that you want this? And that you are going to do whatever it takes to be molded and to be and to be challenged and to be changed by God's purpose in his plan. I do a lot of work on on your future self. You know, like who is your who is the you that is going to be that one in number, you know, um, on what Micah says, decide what you want to change. Who is the you? Who, do you, who, who is the you that does that? There is a, a great need for us to get very clear about who we are. In my journal, and one of the things that I, I have shared um, and in working through, and I just, this over even this past week, you know, and I just felt like, it's like, you know, God, you know, what you're building in me is that brewing of identity, of, of value, of mission and purpose, that sense of who I am and how I, God in me, the great I am wants to show up in me, through me as his daughter, as his ambassador, as his voice, as his image, as his heir. I am in that season and I, you know, that season of where the spirit of God is hovering over the face of the waters, that he's hovering over me and that he's saying, let there be light. But there is something that is, that is brewing in me that even some things that I don't see yet, you know, and we've, and we've have come a long way and, and there's more things that we believe that God is bringing to pass. But there's, as you spend more time, then you're able, your imagination expands. You're like, who is this me? Who is this me, God's ambassador? Who is this me, this, this, this heir of hope, this prisoner of hope? How does this prisoner of hope show up in the roles that I currently have in my day to day? I represent his hope for humanity. I'm his trophy. I'm a witness of God's redemptive love and a life transformed and a life that is transforming. As his daughter, I represent his kingdom, his mission, his values, his path, his path, his principles, his purpose, his plan, his promise. Who are you? Who are you in relationship with those that, that you are, are, uh, in close relationship or even in work relationship in who are you? Have you had, how have you decided to, you know, because we put it on God, well, whatever God wants me to do. And God is saying, wait a minute, you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, 
And so I say, Father, as, as your ambassador, as your em emissary of grace and kindness and goodness, I'm, I am a part of this, co-authoring this life with you. Who are you? And so when we, when we look at this, and um, I am number four when Mike talks about finding mentors and coaches in a support group, I'm a part of different um, mentorships and, and um, coaching and support groups. I have some for business. I have some at work where we're, uh, we're working together and supporting one another. I have some for my own personal, you know, of of working with my future self and what it is that I want. I am surrounded. And of course, Mike and I are in covenant together. I am surrounded by those who remind me of where I want to go, of what, and, and it challenging me to step it up, challenging me to um, check in with myself and making sure that I have, that I'm on track, challenging me to show up with my better self. And, and as a part of that, not only does that fuel my imagination of who I am and what I can do, but also when I'm hearing from others and seeing what others are doing in their lives, it fuels like, oh, the possibility. Like, wow, that's amazing. You were here and now you're here. That is amazing. And we're like, I mean, just amazing. And so we are able to fuel this anticipation, you know, and, and this, this uh, vision, this goal, this plan with emotions because we are spending time and we are now adding texture and we're adding layers to this thing that just look like a simple, you know, here's what I want to do or here's what I believe God is saying to me or here's the next step or the next evolution or the next peel back of, of what God is, is doing in my life. We are in the opera. We have an opportunity right now to flourish like we've never flourished before. The big thing about this is we're not flourishing for ourselves only. It's not flourishing for just ourselves. We are in a place God is calling us to in and and nurturing us. Many some of us, like my my lemon trees and my orange trees outside right now, they are so heavy with with fruit and the leaves are just i mean the branches are just are 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 i went to get some lemons last night and the lemons were on the ground they, they were so heavy that it was pulling the branches down um to the ground and there are many of us who have you are in a place where your your fruit is so full and and just just ripe for picking but it's not, and it's not just for you. We're being filled up in order to be poured out. But I have to tell you, and, and Mike and I, we've, we've said this for years. I mean, we've been married um, 33 years together for 36 years. And one of the things that we have found that has been a huge challenge that I think with many believers is that we're so focused on on giving out in our ministry and our destiny and um, that we are we haven't spent time in just connecting with our creator as just being his child I have to say my highest role my highest honor is to be God's daughter I am his ambassador and wherever he decides to use me you know whether it is as a instructional designer, instructional designer, professionally, um, performance consultant, all those things that I do professionally, uh, and, uh, or as a minister um, and, and ministering. And when we, when we look at it, it doesn't matter where it is that he's called us, you know, to be there, to be present with people, to, to lean in on difficult conversations and to, to um, create space for people to really um, connect to who they really are and to connect to their creator. We have an opportunity to flourish, but I believe that the Lord wants us to flourish first within. To, to do what the work that Nehemiah did, you know, and spending that time, you know, with our father, 
knowing and hanging on absolutely hanging on to Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans that I have for you and we're going to go down a different street we're absolutely going down a different street but there's some things though that I need you to understand there's some things I want you to unpack about the current street that you've been on because you've been wanting to be delivered out of that street but you have not spent time on unpacking how you got stuck on that street he said, so I don't want you to end up on another street, you know, um, you know, same street, just different name. I want you to do the work of unpacking how you got where you are. And understanding, moving forward, what it is that you need. What type of coaches do you need? What type of programs do you need to move you forward into this next place? I want to encourage you to do the work, the practice, which is the intentional focus of daily bringing our morning offering of gratitude, prayer, mindfulness, compassion. When you do that, when you take the time to intentionally, intentionally carve out that time during the day, during the morning, you're creating sacred space. You're creating sacred space for yourself. You're creating space for you to breathe, to connect back to what matters, to align yourself with what God wants, and to surrender to that, to that sweet surrender, and stepping into who you really are. Again, I want to encourage you to go back through flourishing, making change easier, decide decide what you want to change and then decide how you will change it nurture your desire and passion for the change create a plan go back to look at Nehemiah and you see that with Nehemiah not only did he get a plan but he got he had a plan and because he was able to articulate his plan the king was able to support him and so that not only did he get funding and not only did he get resources he also got, he also received um, a declaration that, uh, and a signet of approval that was in backing, you know, for the, that, the walls being rebuilt. And then when they started rebuilding the walls, you know, which moved into July and August, you know, in preparation for um, the new year, as they began doing that, they, the people came with a mind to work. So Nehemiah started out in, in the quietness in the winter of, of acknowledging how he got off track. He, meaning all of them, acknowledging that, no shame, coming back, fulfilling what Jeremiah said that on that day, you will call out and he will answer you. And Nehemiah experienced the fulfillment of what Jeremiah was talking about. And we are partakers in that. In the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time. Some of us are going to have some suddenlies because we're in the fullness of time. All I can do is encourage you to do the work. You know, where's your evidence? Where's the evidence that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Where is the evidence of that change and transformation? Where is your work? Where are you doing your work? Who are you doing your work with? Who are your mentors? Who is your support group? Is your support group one that's going that's that's also making a change and changing the streets or are they ones that's stuck it's time to make a change it is truly time for flourishing it is time for expanding and i would even say that the years that the canker worm ate up god is redeeming those years but it's going to take a it's going to take being very focused and doing the work this this takes time you know this this takes time working through 
and there there is there is it's and sometimes it's not it's not pretty and i have one here um this is from march 7th 2019 and that the topic here is breaking cycles just looking at breaking cycles and and looking at what i'm feeling where my what my mind was experiencing and the steps that i needed to do different and that's what is this is all full of me working through and understanding that i'm at cause not just effect that i have the ability to choose that in between stimulus and response is space and in that space is my opportunity to choose we are the wild card of our own lives we're looking for you know oh i need a miracle the miracle is the miracle within the greatest miracle is the miracle within and we are a part of that wild card when we make a different when we do something different and we change and 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 we stay with god and trust him i know it's in one of this this journal is what my my one of my like i would say my trust issue journal with god but there is a when I look at it now and look back when I was writing it, it was painful. But when I look back at it now, I am so grateful. I'm so grateful I did the work. I'm so grateful that I, I identified and, and didn't, I was not ashamed to share with my Heavenly Father what I was experiencing and the areas that um, I was feeling um, fear and, and anguish and like God, where are you? You know, I even I think I even asked. It's like, are you even in Chino nine one seven one zero this time of the year? Because we were, um, it it was hard. It was hard. And so, what are you writing? What is the story that you are writing? What dragons are you slaying? What dragons have you been called to slay? And and not just, and I, and I love it, it's like not just slaying the dragon, but you got to dissect that thing and find out, you know, what it feeds on inside of you. So let me hear from you. What are your thoughts uh, in regards to this next place? I mean, you know, we have, it's, it's flourishing. We have an opportunity to flourish. Uh, and, and talk to me. What's, what are you I'm um, planning to do moving forward with what you have learned in the last two weeks and what you know about what Mike and I have, you know, uh, our role in supporting you and uh, many of you go to other churches and things like that. But what are you planning to do? What are you planning to do differently? Go ahead and post it uh, in chat. Uh, you can do that in Zoom and you can also do that in, uh, you can also do that on on Facebook but what are you doing different what are you going to do differently let's get some accountability uh, going here what are you planning to do differently what stood out for you on any of this that we have covered and thank you Kevin I'm seeing some of your comments here it's this yeah exactly we're we're not <laughs> We're not alone in our struggles. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Lord had me, um, you know, just documenting my own walk, number one, for myself, for my family, for my girls, you know, um, but also as an ambassador. I am a prisoner of hope. I am a, an absolute prisoner of hope. Absolutely. So what are you all planning? What are you all committing to do? What are, what are you committing to do in this next season? So, uh, so Kevin was saying, um, killing generational curses. He said, my parents <laughs> kill their curse. I'm killing mine. And it takes time and effort to kill them one at a time. Yeah, each, each, each generation is responsible. Um, uh, I believe um, it was an older pastor, uh, Marilyn Hickey's husband, when I went, to, I was in Denver back in the 80s, and I asked him at that time, you know, what will it take for the young people to, um, you know, evangelize 
uh, and uh, and he said each each generation is responsible for evangelizing themselves. Each generation, you know. So even as I'm, you know, definitely past, you know, 1980s. That's when I was, you know, in my my early uh, 20s and and moving forward and coming into uh, another season. I realized we we have things that we are needing to lead for the next generation, you know, so we have a responsibility, you know, for that. All right. Well, it looks like we're um, just looking at some of the comments that's, you know, that's coming in. I just want to encourage all of you, um, even if you're in your 38th year, you're sitting at the pool, uh, there is there is something to be said about imina, you know, which is faithfulness in Hebrew. There's something to be said about continuing to show up. Uh, and there's something to be said about when that moment comes and you are presented with the opportunity, will you be made whole, that you pick up your bed and walk. And this is one of those pick up your bed and walk messages. Pick up your bed and walk. Be bold, be fearless, bask in his love, uh, uh, just abide in his abundant love for you. And it doesn't matter your age, whether you're starting out or you're on the other side and you say to God, you know, I, you know, I have not as many years um, before me as I have behind me. And so what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with the balance of my life? And trusting him, based on the wisdom that you have now gained, trust him to bring forth a plan for flourishing. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you all for joining us. And prayerfully, Mike will be back uh, next week uh, with us. And for all of you uh, in the Zoom room, we thank God for you and be blessed go out and do the work to flourish because he does have a plan for us and it's a plan for our future to give us a hope and we are prisoners of hope. Be blessed.